Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for May 3rd, 2022. I'm excited about what I'm teaching right now. I'm flowing in the rain. And so, you know, I see ministry as almost like a surfer, right? Uh, and really on life for that matter. A surfer can't create a wave. All a surfer can do is ride the wave when it comes. And so uh, when it comes to me and ministry, I, I'm, I take on no pressure to perform. I, I'm not trying to create the wave. I'm just like, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? I just ride the wave when it comes. And so I get caught in these veins sometimes where I teach on something for days or weeks or months. And, you know, and I'm just riding the wave. Uh Uh-oh, you're saying I got no audio? Uh, Hallelujah. Let me just check real quick. You guys, praise God. Can you hear me? One person said no audio. Let me just make sure I have audio before I move on. All right. So praise God. Um, So I'm just riding the wave. I'm riding the wave as it comes. And as I go, I'm yielded to the Holy Spirit. And this is how we're supposed to live. That way, your life is all about God. It's all about his love and his grace and his favor towards you. You're not trying to make things happen. You're just riding. you're, You're tapped into this vein. So right now I'm in this vein where I'm teaching on God's grace and our faith. I, I trust that is blessing you. I hope that that you're growing in the grace of God towards you. And so what I have to teach this morning is really important. So I want you to open up your heart to get ready to receive. All right, so let's get into the word. Here we go. We've been looking at John chapter one, verse 14, verses 14 and 17, Galatians five and six. I've been teaching on God's grace in our faith and faith works by love. So this is faith works by love part six. And here's the title of today's message. When you feel like you don't know what you're doing. Have you ever been there where where God is leading you to do something, but you feel like you don't know what you're doing? Well, I've been there a bunch of times. Let's talk about it. John chapter one, verse 14, the Bible says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we were able to behold his glory. It is the glory of the only begotten of the Father, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 17, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 5 and 6, once you're in Christ, then neither circumcision nor uncircumcision meaneth anything or availeth anything. The only thing that matters now is faith, and faith works by love. So what does this mean for you today. I have a lot. You know, God gave me so much, but he was like, when I got through the two points that I'm going to share with you this morning, he was like, yeah, just save the rest for tomorrow. Let Just stop there. Like he gave me these two things and he was like, that's enough. Like, don't give him more than that. Like this would be enough. So I have two things to share with you in this morning. Right. And as I share these two things, God already said is enough. So you ready? You ready to receive? I'm ready to release. All right, here we go. Number one, God will call you to do things that you don't know how to do to force you to rely on his grace. Let me say that again. God will call you to do things that you don't know how to do, and this forces you to rely on his grace. Let me explain. I'll give you an example. I know someone right now who's running a business uh, in a field that the Lord told them to enter, but it's not the field of their training or education or experience, right? And so this person is often asked, why are you running a business in this field, you don't really know anything about this field. Um, and you had over 20 years experience in this other field. And, and this person actually wants to work in this other field sometimes. And every time they try, the, you know, it just doesn't work out. And the Lord is like, no, just rest right here. This is what I told you to do. And when people ask this person, well, why, why are you operating in this field when this is not really your field, where well, you could be over here um, this person, of course, has asked God about it. And, and so God's answer to this person was this. Same thing that God told Paul, but with some, some more in it. God said to this person, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. If I allowed you to run a business in your field, you would do things 
without even asking me. But since I called you to do something you know nothing about, it forces you to rely on me. So think about that for a minute. Here we have a God. You're like, really? God would do that? Oh yeah, God does that. God does that. A God does that because God, the life of faith should be exciting because you're walking with God and you are relying on him to give you insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding to do things that you don't know how to do. So, so in this case might sound extreme. Like, why would God do that? Oh, listen, there's Bible precedent for it. I'm going to use Peter and Paul as an example of what I'm talking about. But definitely there's Bible precedent for what I'm saying. God will lead you to do things and go into realms that you're not qualified for. And that forces you to rely on him every step of the way. So let me use, I'm going to use Paul. I'm going to use Peter as an example. Uh, and this is the life of faith, right? So, and it, you have to rely on his grace. So this is what Paul said about himself and about his call. But remember, this is Paul that, that persecuted the church and then had to get born again and then had to go lead the same church he was fighting against, right? So this is what Paul said in Galatians 1, 15 and 16. But, but even before I was born, Paul was like, he, think, he thought about everything he'd been through in life. And then he goes back and says, you know what? To be honest with you, God is such a big God that even before I was born, God chose me. God didn't choose me on the road to Damascus. God chose me even before I was born. And he called me by his marvelous grace. Now, obviously he called me by grace and not by merit because I was fighting against the church. So I was doing things that were wrong. I was there when they stoned Stephen. I was too young to kill the first Christian martyr, but I held the coats of the men that were there and I held their coats so they could kill Stephen. And so he was like, I, 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 I was there. And so I, I, it can't be that God called me by merit because I didn't merit it. it. I didn't perform for it. God called me by his unearned grace. He chose me by his marvelous grace and he did this before I was born, right? Then it pleased God to reveal his son to me so that I could proclaim the gospel, the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. So at the right time, God revealed his son to me. At just the right time, I got born again. And then God revealed to me that my assignment is to reveal Jesus to the Gentiles. Now, why is that significant? Why does that have anything to, to do with what I just said in the setup? Let me explain. Paul was born. I'm gonna try to take my time this morning because this is really important. Paul was born to Hebrew parents in the city of Tarsus, which is found in modern day Turkey. In Paul's day, Tarsus was the capital of the Roman province, Sicilia. This meant that Paul had dual citizenship. So he was both a Roman and a Hebrew, right? He was an Israelite and a Roman, both at the same time. So while his Roman citizenship gave him all these special privileges, he can go in and out. He had, he had like two passports. But he was still raised as a Hebrew, though. So he studied under the best teacher, teachers of the law. So he studied under Gamaliel. It would be like going to Harvard, right? He studied under the best teachers of the law of Moses, and he spent his whole life, prior to coming to Jesus, climbing up the Jewish religious ladder. So he was being groomed. He was being prepared. He was being mentored. He was, being, he was moving up the Jewish religious ladder to the point where he held the coats of the men that killed Stephen to the point where when he was old enough, he was in charge of having Christians locked up, right? So he was prepared. He was groomed for that. And then he was born again. And so when he was born again, he spent all his life studying the law of Moses, starting studying the Levitical law, the Ten Commandments, the 603 other commandments. He studied that all his life. He was groomed. He was one of the Pharisees of the Pharisees. He had re personal relationships with the Sanhedrin. So you would think that once he gets born again, that God would use Paul to go preach to the Jews, to the Jewish religious elite, the people that fought against Jesus. Paul was friends with all those people. So Paul could have gone to those people and told them about his encounter with Jesus. Paul could have gone to those people and told them about what happened on the road to Damascus. Paul could have gone to those people and shared the gospel with them. Simply stated, Paul could have used his background, his experience, and his connections for his ministry, right? He could have gone to minister to the people that he had known all his life, that he had a relationship with, that he had built relationships with, that they had mentioned, all of that. God could have used Paul to go reach the Jews. And God says, okay, now that I, you, you spent all your life doing that, 
And now that you're ready to, to be used, yes, Lord, I'm ready. So I want you to go reach the Gentiles. He said, what? Say, yeah, yeah. I want you to go reach the Gentiles. Now, remember, Jews had no dealings with the Gentiles. <laughs> so, so Paul was like, wait a minute. I spent all my life in this crowd. And you want me to go now spend the rest of my life with another crowd? I don't know nothing about them. I don't, and just to remind you, God, remember, we don't really have dealings with those people. You know, deep down inside, consciously or subconsciously, we don't even like them. And so God is like, no, the, the, I'm going to put in your heart a desire for those people, and I need you to go preach Jesus to those people. Now, Paul was exceptionally learned in the things of the law of Moses and the Levitical law. He was exceptionally prepared for these people. And God says, okay, great. Since you know everything about the law, I'm going to call you to go minister to people that know nothing about the law. So you can't use that. What? I can't. No, no, I don't want you to use that. For real? Why not? No, because if you, if I called you to reach those people, you would rely on stuff you already know. Okay, well, Rick, well, then who did God send to reach those educated people? right? The people in the law that really studied and went to school and all of that. Who did God send to those people? Oh, well, you know how God works. He sent a fisherman, a guy that never went to school, a guy that was always talking out of turn, a guy that cut someone's ear off, right? <laughs> Malchus, you know, that guy, that guy, his name is Peter. So God took an uneducated man and sent him to go minister to the most educated men of his day, and God took a man with all of this education in the law and sent him to go minister to people that knew nothing about the law. Why does God do this? Because it forces you to rely on him and his grace, not you and your ability. So it forces you to rely on his finished work and not your work. It forces you to rely on him every step of the way because there are going to be moments when you live the life of faith that God calls you to do these crazy things when you feel like you don't know what the heck you're doing. And, and when you don't know what you're doing, when you feel like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't feel like I'm qualified. I don't feel like I'm, I, I don't even know what I'm doing. God says, good. All right, cool. So, but am I with you? Yes. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Well, then let me do it. How about you just rely on me? And if you rely on me, then I got you. I didn't listen. Faith works by love. I didn't send you here to fail. Think about that for a minute. I'm God. I made plans for you from the foundations of the world. I didn't, I didn't orchestrate all this stuff. I didn't move the pieces on the chessboard for you to fail. I'm here for your success. And if you just listen to me and rely on me and my finished work, my finished work will manifest in your life and at just the right time. And so, so it's like, whoa, that, that's a, now that forces you to rely on him. That, that's scary sometimes. It, 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 it's exciting a lot of times. Why? Because the life of faith should be exciting. You just never know. Like, it's like, you know, you're always looking to him for everything. Now, you can either live like that where you're relying on him or you could just rely on you and, and whatever it is that you came up with on your own. I told you that God will only allow me to share two things with you this morning. So let me give you the second point. So the second point is God calls you to do things that force you to rely on him and his grace and not your ability. And so same thing, I'm basically flowing in the same vein. God called one of the most educated men in the Hebraic law, Paul, and called him to reach people that knew nothing about the law. And then he took somebody that was a common fisherman with no education, and he called them to reach the most educated men of his day, right? And so God does this because he doesn't want you to rely on your ability or your power, your strength. He, he, doesn't, he does this because he wants to get you out of your comfort zone. Listen, I, I, I'll use myself. This is not in my notes, but let me just share this real quick. I see some people uh, on the chat knew me when I was in uniform uh, in the U.S. Army. God called me to do things. So first I was enlisted. Um, I went from E1 through E6, and then I became a, a warrant officer. And even enlisted, God used me in, 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 in a special way a lot of times, even before I got born again. But then once I got born again as a warrant officer, I was like, God called me to routinely operate in levels that exceeded my rank. And I operated in realms that was just uncommon. For those of you that know me when I was in uniform, you would acknowledge that, that the anointing on my life, I'm not saying it was me, I'm saying it was God, was uncommon. 
And so what God does is that he wants to use you in ways that are unusual, that are uncommon. But if you rely on you and your, your level of preparation, then you're just going to be like everybody else because you're going to be looking at things from a human perspective, from a human point of view. But if you yield to God, God will use you to do things that, that exceed your ability and your power and your strength, and you will have uncommon success, atypical success, because it's the grace of God and not you. You got it? So when you, what you feel most comfortable doing, look at me, what you feel most comfortable doing Maybe what you want to do for Christ. You're like, okay, God, I want to do this because I feel most comfortable doing that. However, God knows that if he allows you to do what you feel most comfortable doing, then you would more than likely do it in your own strength. Think about that for a minute. See, when you're doing what you already know how to do, then you're, you run the risk of doing it without involving God. So there's a danger in that. For, exa for example, I, I've been doing today's word so long that I, I'm accustomed to doing it now, right? So there's a danger in me getting up in the morning and coming down here and just typing something out and then sharing it with you. I, I, I shudder to think, I don't want to do today's word in my own power and my own ability and my own, own strength because you guys don't get up in the morning to watch me. You are, you're not listening for me. You're listening for the God in me. And so when you're doing something that you feel very comfortable doing, you run the risk of doing it without God. So God calls you to do things that you're not comfortable with. He calls you outside of your comfort zone. He calls you, he calls you to operate in realms beyond your education and experience and relationships. He calls you to operate in realms that exceed your bank account and, 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 or to connect with people that you don't know. And he forces you to rely on him because he puts you in realms that you don't have the, the background for. And so as a matter of fact, uh, uh, I'm not going to call names, but there's people on this call, myself included, that, that, that when God will just favor you and you operate in a, in a realm and it's the grace of God and you're so good at it that people with way more education and people with way more experience have to come to you for answers. And they don't. And then when they find out that, oh, oh, this person was you know, has this kind of experience, or this person was enlisted, or this person was that, and it, it, they are it, it dumbfounded that they have to come to you because you operate in a level of wisdom that exceeds theirs because they're, rely they're relying on education and you're relying on revelation. So this is why your faith has to be rooted and grounded in God's love and not your performance. If if your faith is performance-based and you, you're, you are setting your faith in agreement only for things that you feel comfortable doing, then you will never experience this kind of adventure. The, the life of faith should be an adventure. It, you should have experiences with God. Where, where you're walking in realms and you're, you tell your wife, man, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but it's going to be good. Why? Because I'm walking with God. God is walking with me. I can't tell you how many times I, I, I walked on the E-ring of the Pentagon and, and I would be praying in the Holy Ghost on the E-ring, about to go into a meeting. And I'm like, well, how in the world did I wind up here? And I, I spent five years on the E-ring and I would go into meetings and I'm like, oh my God, God, please don't let me look stupid. Oh, glory to God. And he would just get, it's an adventure. It, you should be excited when you're walking with God. You know that you're walking with God and God is walking with you and you are there because God loves you. And so there, there are countless moments when you when you live like this that, that you're going to feel like you don't know what you're doing. Like you don't know what the heck you're doing, but it's okay because your faith is rooted and grounded in God's love, not your performance. Your faith is rooted and grounded in this thought. Watch this. I had to remind myself many times. You, you, when you live like this, you have to say to yourself, I'm only doing, come on now. You go to the bathroom and you say to yourself, you say, self, I'm only doing what God told me to do. And he did not send me here to fail. He loves me and this will work out for my good in the end. Now, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's going to work out for my good. God, I thank you for bringing me here. I thank you for giving me the wisdom. I thank you for giving me words and performing the work. I thank you, Father, for opening doors for me that no man can close. And you're sending people to me to help me to use their power and their ability and their strength and their money to, help, to bless me in ways that I can't even bless 
myself and I'm walking into rooms and realms. I'm saying stuff I never heard before. I'm saying stuff I have to write down for myself. I'm saying stuff and I'm like, man, that was good. I hope this meeting is being recorded. And you're like, oh my God. And why? Because at that point, you know, it's not about you and it's all about him. God loves it when you walk into a situation where your total reliance is on him. Because at that moment, your focus is not on you and your work. Your focus is, is on God's finished work. You know that you're not doing something that you came up with on your own. You're, you're doing something that was not birthed in your heart. You're doing something that was birthed in God's heart. And it was birthed in God's heart before the world began. So God wants you to accept the fact that he called you by grace, not by merit. He called you by grace, not your performance. He called you by grace, not because you're qualified. He called you so that you can rest in the fact that he prepared you for this from the foundations of the world. And he's already stored up everything that you would ever need to succeed. And he wants you to walk in your divine assignment, knowing that you're doing this by faith knowing that you're relying on the grace of God, knowing that faith works by love, knowing that you're reminding yourself over and over again, I'm doing this because I know God loves me with an unconditional love. And so he wants to do this because he planned to do this through me from the foundations of the world. Now, living this way is not always going to be comfortable. Living this way, there will be many moments where you might be scared out of your mind in the natural, but God loves it. When, when you when you know that you don't know what the heck you're doing and you're still doing it and you're doing it because you are convinced that God loves you and that he has his, your best interest at heart, and that, that you know you can say to your spouse, babe, I know, I know, listen, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know it's going to be good. I know it's going to work out. And I know God didn't send us here to fail. I know, I know God is not going to let me fail. And even I feel... I feel underprepared, unprepared. I feel unqualified. I, so I'm like, God, please, please don't let me, don't let this thing fail because I don't know what I'm doing. Please. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing what I, I don't, I'm doing what I know how to do. I, and, I, and, and, and just, please God. And God is like, calm down, son. Calm down. Daughter. Listen, faith works by love. Just know that I love you. And I didn't send you here to fail. I got you. Living by faith, you got to learn how to rest, how to get comfortable in a certain level of discomfort because you know it's not your, about your ability. God calls you to people and places and projects that force you to rely on him and his grace. And listen, look at me. His grace is already on you. His grace is already on you to do what he called you to do. So here's the question as I close. Will you have the faith to attempt what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do? Will you do it even when you don't feel comfortable? Will you do it even when you don't feel like you know what you're doing? Will you do it even when you are afraid of failure? So if you understand what I'm teaching today and you get this down in your heart, then you'll do it simply because you are convinced that God loves you. And if that's you and you're like, you know what? Faith works by love. I'm going to do it by faith because I know that God loves me. Because at that point, I know that I'm in good hands. I'm in God's hands. And if you know that you're in God's hands, God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never turn his back on you. Faith works by love. Faith works when you're convinced God loves me with an unconditional love. So listen, I have more, but God only told me to just give you those two points for today. I'll give you more about, uh, about this tomorrow. I've given you enough to meditate on. But my prayer for you is that you overcome your fears, that you open up your heart to God's love, and that you enter into God's rest so you can embrace the grace to do what God has called you to do, even when you don't feel like you know what you're doing. See, your faith will be strong when you are convinced that, hey, I'm in good hands. God loves me. God didn't send me here to fail. So I'm going to rest in God's finished work and not my work. Say amen to that. I tried to take my time today. I'm telling you, to God be the glory. All right. So I want you. Uh, to speak this over your life. Uh, and as I lead you in this declaration of faith, I want you to speak this and, and, and speak this slowly and do it from, I want you to speak words of faith from a believing heart. All right, say this. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your love and grace. You love me with an everlasting love. You made plans for me before the world began. I was born ignorant of your plans. So I spent years investing in a life that I desired. Now I'm born again and I have your spirit in me. So your Holy Spirit reveals to me what you prepared for me 
but was concealed from me. I open my heart to what you reveal to me. You need me to do things I don't know how to do. You call me to operate on levels I feel unqualified for. You grace me to enter rooms that would terrify me if it were not for your presence. And I embrace the grace to do it all. I don't do it in my own self because humanly speaking, I'm unqualified. But I embrace the grace to do it all because I know you love me. I believe your grace is on me to do what I could never do without you. You are leading me to success and not failure. I believe you favor the work of my hands. I believe you release everything I need at just the right time. And I believe all of this because I know you love me. I trust you, Father, even when I don't know what I'm doing. And since I rely on you for everything, I know greater is coming for me because my life is not about me. My life is all about you. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. Tomorrow there's going to be another one. If you're not getting my notes, and you should want my notes, get my notes and um, go to todaysword.org. You get them for free. Click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address there. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you and God loves you more. Uh, do me a favor, leave me some comments in the chat. I like to go back and read those comments. If this message was a blessing to you, tell me something about it. Tell me how it was a blessing to you because I want to go back and I want to read that. And then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. If, you're, if you enjoy this content and you want more uh, like behind the scenes content or more content where Isabella and I are pouring in, into some people like in a mentoring kind of relationship, go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina and check that out. I love you. God loves you more. I will see you tomorrow morning. Open your heart to the word. God bless you.